It was 7.51 a.m. on Friday, January 12, 2007. A youngish white man entered a Washington subway station and positioned himself next to a waste paper basket. He was dressed simply in jeans and a t-shirt, and he removed a violin from a small case that he had placed near his feet and put a few dollars of seed money in it before he began to play. Over the span of 43 minutes, he performed six classical pieces in that busy subway station. And during that time, over a thousand people walked by, mostly on their way to work. Each passerby had a choice to make as they walked by that day. Do you stop and listen? Do you give the young man a few dollars? Do you have time? for beautiful music. It turns out that this was not an ordinary street musician. This was an experiment organized by the Washington Post. The musician's name was Joshua Bell, and he is considered one of the finest violinists in the world. Tickets to see him perform usually start at $100, and he regularly performs at the finest concert halls to sold out crowds. In the subway that day, he played some of the most famous, most difficult classical violin pieces on a very old, very valuable violin. The question that the Washington Post was trying to ask is, will people notice beauty in a utilitarian setting in the midst of the rush of their everyday life? Before publishing the results of their experiment, they asked the music director of the American National Symphony Orchestra to guess how many people would stop and how much money the violinist would make. He guessed that the audience would be bigger in Europe, but that at U in the US at rush hour, it would be about 35 to 40 people who would notice the quality and maybe as many as 100 who would stop to listen for at least a few minutes and that the violinist would make $150. Sadly, the music director significantly overestimated. In the 43 minutes of Bell's performance, only seven people stopped. Only seven people stopped what they were doing to hang around and take in the performance for at least a minute. 27 people gave money, most of them on the run, for a total of $32 and change. That leaves 1,070 people who hurried by without even turning to look. The hidden camera reveals some interesting surprises though. A woman and her preschooler emerge from an escalator. The woman is walking fast, but her son who is three keeps trying to turn around and listen to the musician. You can see this cute black kid twisting around to look for the musician and trying to get his mother to stop. She doesn't. When they talk to her later, it turns out she was running late. But this boy is part of a very interesting phenomena. Absolutely every child who walked past tried to stop and notice what was going on. And you would not naturally expect children to be attracted to classical music. But what children do do is notice that which is different in their environment. Other than the age question here, there didn't seem to be any other pattern to those who stopped and those who didn't. People of many races, genders, and economic circumstances as judged by their appearance all responded in about the same way. A few stopped, a few gave money, a few looked like they were listening a little bit as they walked by, but most seemed to ignore the musician entirely, and some even seemed to intentionally avoid looking his way, perhaps so they wouldn't feel guilty about not giving him any money. And I have little doubt that unless perhaps I was on vacation, and maybe not even then, that I would have walked by that violinist too. I would have been so absorbed in getting to work or to whatever other destination I was headed for that day, that even if I had a passing thought that the music was lovely, 
I would not have stopped. And that makes me a little sad. How do we lose that intuitive appreciation for the beautiful, the unique, the lovely that most of us had as children? Why did the kids try to stop when their parents or guardians didn't seem to notice? Is this perhaps why Jesus said that unless we enter the kingdom of God as a little child, we will never enter it? And what would the world look like if we paused more often to appreciate beauty? In the Bible story we heard a few minutes ago, Jesus invites people to consider the wildflowers and the birds. He says, don't worry about all the other things, like food, like clothing, like getting to work on time. He says, look at the wildflowers, listen to the birds. I'm pretty sure that in first century Palestine, Jesus never encountered a violinist in a subway station. That's just not something they had back then. I don't think the violin had been invented yet, and I know the subway hadn't been. But Jesus did say, notice the beauty in the world as you find it. Pay attention to the song of the birds outside your window. Notice the wildflowers that grow like weeds along the side of the road. And learn from them. Let them be your spiritual teacher. As we begin our Lenten journey this week, we are inviting one another to practice our faith in an intentional way this Lent. Usually learning and growth are things that don't happen on their own. It takes practice. And practice is the only way to get good at something. I'm skeptical of the expression that says practice makes perfect because when it comes to spirituality, perfection is just not the goal. But practice does help us to get better at the things that matter to us. And practice also helps us to form habits which can be life enhancing. So this week, the invitation is to practice awareness, to pay attention, to notice, to be mindful, to consider. Many of us know how easy it is to stop being fully aware, fully engaged, fully appreciative of life. Like the folks in the subway station that day, if we have our minds set on a particular destination, we might miss the finest violin concert of our lives because that's not what we were expecting to interrupt our morning commute. And like the people Jesus talks to that day, we might not appreciate the beauty of the world because our minds are filled with worries about many things. Or like the adult on our screens, Many things can distract us from the people who long for our undivided attention. So the invitation this week is to find some small yet meaningful way to practice being more aware in your everyday life. The possibilities are endless. Take time each day to become more aware of your own feelings and needs. Practice listening with your full attention when you are talking to people. Look for beauty in the world around you, or look for things you can be grateful for. Pay attention to who is being left out and to whose voices are not being heard or listened to. Pause to notice things like the brightness of the stars, or the texture of the snow, or the taste of your food, or the feel of a hot shower. Set aside time to listen to music or to contemplate or even create art. Change up your habits and see what you notice when you do that. This can be as simple as changing the time of day you shower or the order in which you do things in the morning or before bed. Turn off external stimuli for a period of time, like the radio when you are driving in your car or your cell phone at dinner, and see what you become aware of without the usual distractions. And because life is busy and you might be nodding your head going, that's a great idea, I should do this. But by the time you get home from church, the idea may have vanished into the everyday demands of life. We're going to take a few moments now so that everyone has a space to think about their own lives and how they might want to practice awareness or mindfulness this week. 
If we can become concrete about our intentions, then we are more likely to be able to follow through on them. Similarly, if we pick something that is slightly challenging but not overwhelming, we are also more likely to succeed. Feel free to write down your intentions on a little piece of purple paper that was in your announcement insert. If you've lost it, there are extras at the usher station and there are also pens at the usher station if you don't have one. And put it someplace you'll see it regularly, in your wallet, on, with your cell phone, on your bathroom mirror, on the cupboard where you keep your coffee at home, on the dashboard of your car, or wherever else seems appropriate to you. If you'd rather not try this week's practicing invitation, or you are not yet ready to think about what your intention might be, then you now get a couple minutes for silent prayer. Let us share some time for reflection together. <laughs>